I'm Ernest Green. In the spring of 1957, I was finishing my junior year in high school. Each day on my way to school, I passed Central High, the white school. Its outstanding academic ratings and facilities made it one of the best schools in America. I went to Horace Mann, the black school. But in those days, the words black and African American weren't used. So it was called the Negro or Colored School. I'll be there. I know Doreen is your main squeeze, but there needs to be a little air between the two of you, okay? Yes, Mr. Pryor. since the Supreme Court had ordered all public schools to desegregate. The NAACP and the Little Rock School Board had finally compromised on a phase-in plan. The high school would be integrated first, with the black students volunteering to transfer to Central High. Most people didn't expect trouble. After all, we weren't Deep South, we were Upper South. Besides, integration had already taken place in the law school, libraries, parks, and public buses. With the support of the Little Rock newspapers, Mayor Mann and Governor Faubus, no one thought there'd be any trouble. Naturally, you can see the concern of the Citizens Council. The federal government is trying to dictate to the state of Arkansas. Now, now, Emmett, everybody knows no state law supersedes federal law. Governor, a lot of people feel otherwise. We got ourselves an explosive situation here. The Negro is fundamentally inferior. He's immoral, inept, and incapable of learning. And integration will lead to the mongrelization of the races. Now, do you want to be known as the governor who permitted the dilution of white blood? Reverend, I'm just a boy who came down out from the hills. I don't think I even saw a Negro till I was old enough to shave. But if you want northern business down here, and if you want factories, and jobs, and tax revenues. Governor, if you want to be reelected, if you want a third term, which is as rare in Arkansas as a blue pig, then you better listen to the will of the people. 85% of the people of this state are opposed to that, that plan of the devil 
You've seen the poll. Now, Mr. Jimmy Johnson down in the Delta is directing his campaign for governor at that 85%. Mr. Jimmy Johnson is not governor of Arkansas and is not going to be. What are you suggesting, gentlemen? You have police powers. Use them to prevent the integration of Central High. Use them to protect the purity of the white race and become a great man in the eyes of all true Americans. All right, now pay attention, man, because I hereby and forth with nominate myself as your campaign manager. And the vote is unanimous, Motion Carrot. Now I'm going to make you president of student body horseman class of 58. Now first, we need a theme song. Yeah. Now you go around campus with your horn making sweet sounds. You go up to the chicks and you say, my, you're looking fly today. And whether they do or not, that's politics. <laughs> Marcus, who's Crispus Attucks? Uh, who? The first to defy, the first to die. Killed by the British at the Boston Massacre on the night American independence started. Marcus, he was a Negro. So? Harriet Tubman. So join the troop. Frederick Douglass. Yeah, I know them. Civil War. Hiram Rebels. Lance Bruce. Senators from Mississippi. Negroes. Do you understand that, Marcus? No. I don't understand what you're talking about. OK. Now, what have they got at Central that we don't have at Horace Mann? They've got a stadium, haven't they? They've got an auditorium, haven't they? They've got textbooks that are new, not hand-me-downs with names already in them. They've got hundreds of microscope slides instead of just one for every 50 students. Hey, man, can you imagine what George Washington Carver could have done in a lab like that? What else have they got, Marcus? I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Wouldn't it be nice to find out? Hey, you're thinking of transfer. Now, you're crazy. You're a big bad cat on campus. Now, you could be student body press. You got the Jasmine. You could be in a senior play. We could do Cyrano. You can even wear a big nose. Now, look at all you'd be giving up. Brother, finish your chores and wash up for supper. Marcus, you have to leave now unless you're planning to eat with us. Uh, no, thanks, Miss Green. I've got to go home. All right. You got to be crazy to transfer. You'd be absolutely, positively non compass mentis. That means not too much up here if you get my drift. Grandfather, my mother's father, was deacon at the church. He always said a person should put his best foot forward, so he was a very careful dresser. I think he was the only mail carrier in the U.S. Postal Service who wouldn't wear a uniform. He made his rounds in a three-piece suit. Mother and aunt were the first black women to leave Little Rock to go to college in Ohio. Both were teachers. Scott was still a learner. Scott, the blade face is in. I don't see the difference. Nobody's going to get cut. One way is right, the oh. other is wrong. That's the difference. Isaiah 40, verse 31. Those who look to the Lord will win new strength. They will grow wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will march on and never grow faint. Amen. Amen. Everything looks delicious, Lothair. Why, thank you, Papa. I'm going to start out with some of this tomato relish. Mm. Mrs. Wilson brought that by earlier today, especially for you. She says it's your favorite. How would that woman know what my favorite is? <laughs> oh, now, Scott, your place gonna get so heavy you won't be able to lift it. I need my strength, Grandfather. I gotta deliver those papers. I understand, son, but you don't have to put all the chicken on the plate at once. It's been cooked. It ain't gonna run off. Mother? I've decided I'm gonna transfer to Central. trouble. Scott, if I didn't say anything. I think it's a wonderful idea. We've been asking for integration. And now that the Lord has given us this chance, I think we ought to take it. Brother, have you thought about this carefully? It won't be easy. Well, Terrence is doing it. So is Minnie Cheating. 
Hundreds of kids are. Everybody knows you get better classes. They've got a cool physics lab. I can get my science credit. I can get a better education. Mother, kids who graduate from Central, they get into college. You get your diploma there, you get respect. It's going to be trouble. Scott, stop that. I didn't say anything. You keep not saying things like that, and you can be excused from the table. Brother, you don't have to do this. Nobody's pressuring you. It's entirely up to you. I know. Fine, then. If you thought it through and it's what you want to do, you should do it. We'll all stand behind you. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't see any point making a fuss about it. Eat your vegetables. Okra? Why do I have to eat okra? Because it's there, brother. Trouble. Yeah. Yeah. There's not going to be any trouble. Why should there be? It's the law. Yeah. Well, thanks for letting us know. Big rally down in the Delta last night. Jimmy Johnson's got everybody jumping up and down, hollering about Yankee meddling. Governor, you're going to have to do something. He's reaching in your pocket and he's taking votes. Yeah. Yeah. Governor Georgia, sir. Marvin, nice to hear from you. Over, I'm going to be coming over your way for a luncheon with the Citizens Council. I wanted to chat with you first. Hey, you understand, we have no problems in Georgia. <laughs> in no way am I going to comply with that Supreme Court decision. The only thing the feds ever did for us is help pay towards some school programs. Well, they, they can take the black-eyed peas and the soup pots, and they can get the hell out of my state. But everybody's wondering what you're going to do over in Little Rock. My duty, Marvin. A solemn duty. That's just what I've been saying. Orville Faubus is a red-blooded Southern gentleman. Nice talking to you, Orville. Get me the mayor. Governor, if Georgia isn't going to integrate, our people are going to ask, why should Arkansas? Governor, sir. You're going to have to get off the straddle if you want a third term. It's Mayor Mann, sir. Woody, what's this disturbing news I hear about white and Negro students buying knives and guns? Rumors, Governor, nothing more. Spread by the Mother's League. If there's going to be fighting on the streets, I've got to do something. Orville, I just talked to the chief about it. It's all hogwash. Keep me informed. For desegregation, against. I don't see how, in good conscience, I can force our citizens to do something that they are so much against. All right. I'm committed. Melba. Hi. A group of us went to a special meeting at the school board with Daisy Bates, president of the Arkansas NAACP. My father's still not happy I'm doing this. He says we don't need a guinea pig in the house. But, but guinea pigs are so cute. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hey, hey Thelma. I thought your parents would never let you do it with your heart problem. I got my doctor to approve. Central's just a few blocks away from my house, and I won't have to get up so early to take buses to school. All right, children. Let's go. All right, let's begin. I'm Mr. Matthews, a principal of Central High. This is Mr. Loomis, boys counselor, Miss Gaines, girls counselor. 
Uh, will the transfer students rise, as I call their names? Uh, sophomores Jefferson Thomas, Carlotta Walls, juniors Minnie Jean Brown, Elizabeth Eckford, Thelma Mothershed, Melba Patillo, Gloria Ray, Terrence Roberts, Senior Ernest Green. Out of the many applications received, you students have been selected to start the phase-in program on the basis of scholarship and deportment. You may be seated. That's why they picked us. We're the good niggers. <laughs> now, despite personal feelings, I'm sure we all want this done in orderly fashion. So there are certain rules that have to be followed uh, for the protection of the Negro boys and girls. Yes, we certainly wouldn't want anything to happen to any of y'all. You will not be permitted to engage in team sports. You will not be permitted to run for student offices. You will not be permitted to attend dances. You will not be permitted to join any of the service or social clubs, the school marching band, the swing band, the, yes? I play the tennis sax, sir. Does this mean that I won't be able to join any of the groups? Well, you'll be able to take music class, but no, uh, you won't be allowed to join any of the groups. Yes? My daughter, Minnie Jean, has a very fine singing voice, and she sings in our church choir. Are you saying she can't sing in the glee club? Yes. She can take singing class, but she can't join the glee club. Of course, there's something for all of you to consider. If you want to participate in extracurricular activity, there's still time to change your mind and stay at Horace Mann. The children have decided to accept your conditions, onerous as they are. Now, listen up, you little boys and girls. You can't be debonairs. You can't be southerners. You can't be key club, beta club, LR club, stardust club. And your backbone connected to your shoulder bone, your shoulder bone connected to your neck bone, your neck bone connected to your head bone. I hear the words of the Lord. Them bones, them bones, children. Stop that. <laughs> I still don't think it's fair. We should have the same privileges as them white kids. Ernie! Ernie, hold up there. Just hold up a minute now. Look at here. Look at what I read. Here it is, right here. Ernest Green, your name right there. All the children's names. What's the matter with you? Don't anybody have any sense? They're not going to let you in that school. You're messing everything Excuse up. Excuse me, Miss Wilson, I'm be late for we my colored, job. We colored, got it good here in Arkansas. This ain't no Mississippi. We got jobs, we can ride on a bus just like the white folks. Now you get out of line and rile up Mr. Charlie. Excuse me, Miss Wilson. It's all I, a I white to plot go. to break up the community. Jobs are going to get lost. People are going to get hurt. Lenny Wilson, quit jumping on that boy. Shame on you. I am just trying to explain to him the facts of life. Now, you got to take into account the way things are. My grandson has a constitutional right to go to Central High, and that is the facts of life. Too bad you're so old you don't understand that. Oh, you're as old as I am. You've seen all that I've seen. Not so old that I don't know. That just because things are the way they are, they always have to be the way they are. Huh. Don't you forget what happened the last time we got involved in that integration business. <laughs> time for a change, Wilson. Time for a change. I believe it when I see it. If you got a problem with the boy, don't go to him. Come to me. Ernie, I asked you to come by because it's important I talk to you. I know that since your daddy died many years ago, 
that you've been the man of the house. I know what that means. Your mom is very proud of you. Maybe this integration thing will go along smoothly, but then again, maybe it won't. You're no older than any of the other kids, but the thing is, Ernie, you're the only senior. They're gonna be looking to you for leadership, guidance. So the way in which you conduct yourself is gonna set the tone for the other children. Yes, ma'am, I understand. It's not right to put so much responsibility on one so young, but then again, so much of what is going on isn't right either. I can do it, ma'am. I know you can. You know, I have some nice homemade apple pie. <laughs> Martin Luther King developed his ideas of nonviolence from Jesus' Sermon on the Mount and from the ideas of this man. You took Negro history, Ernie. Who is this man and how did he influence Dr. King? Mahatma Gandhi, he was from India. He broke the British colonial rule using nonviolence. Exactly. Dr. King recognized that nonviolence worked, that it has the capacity to throw an adversary off balance. We even turn him into your friend. Ernie, come up here. But, and this is important, nonviolence is most often misunderstood. It is not passive and acquiescent. It doesn't mean taking it. It doesn't mean going into danger as though danger wasn't there. Of course it's there. No, nonviolence is creative. It takes thinking and imagination. It means showing that you are a quality human being and that your adversary is not. So, no bowed heads. Look them in the eyes. Learn their names, even. That's what we're going to practice here in this laboratory. You're walking along, minding your own business. Do it. Do it. All right, Reverend Lawson. I'm coming home from a jam session. <laughs> I'm a white boy. Well, oh, I'm a mean Mr. Charlie. This is a rock. <clears throat> well, what do you do? Wait before you answer. He has three choices. One. Throw it back harder. <laughs> Shh. Two. Run. Boo. Boo. Jefferson, nobody can run as fast as you. Oh, all right, all right. Three. Show that you are a quality human being and that your adversary is not. Creativity, Ernie. Imagination. Chuck, I believe this was yours. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. But leave out the Chuck. <laughs> Not one hair of one head of one white person shall be harmed. Look, those are Dr. King's words. It's right there. OK, Ernie. You're next. Let me see it. School was to start on September 3rd. The boys got ready. So did the girls. Everybody wanted to look fine. I guess secretly we felt that if the clothes were acceptable, the person would be too. Elizabeth spent a whole week making her dress. She said she wanted something new for school that hadn't been seen before. Everyone felt confident things would be okay. Papa? 
Thank you. keep the children out of school. To think I voted for that man. We all did. Boys, I've got a cool pitch of lemonade inside. Y'all are welcome to ease your thirst. Come on. Brother? It's okay, Scott. They may not think we're coming, but we are. Ernie. I know you're into that non-violence, man. And I'm not saying that it's bad, but that non-violence can get you killed. So here, take this. No, see, I, I... Go on, man. Just keep it handy. school board is worried about. They say if the Negro parents take their children to school, it might start a riot. Well, I want to take a picture of my grandson being among the first to enter that school. I, I, I want to record this for history, show it to brother's children and his children's children. Papa, neither of us may be here to show anything to brother's children's children. Well, if you're going to be technical. Good luck, son. Here I go. Bye now. At the last minute, it was decided we would all meet at Daisy Bates' house and be led to school under the protection of the Little Rock City Police. Hey, Miss Bates, where's Elizabeth? They don't have a phone, so I sent a message. I just hope she doesn't go there by herself.
into the school. Stinker! Stinker, teach her a They're mobbing, they're mobbing a Negro girl up the block. That must be Elizabeth. I'll be right back. Go on inside, go on. Tell us your name. Are you going to attend Central High? Would you like to say anything? The Sneakro girl came here alone today to try and attend Central High. She's been the target of an angry, screaming mob that has followed her. We don't want you here. Go back to Africa. Stop it! She's just a child! Now you're safe, dear. I'll take you home. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Come on, do something. I dare you. I do believe that black boy is yelling. We're going back. We're going back to my house. Hurry. out the National Guard brought out the trouble. Well, fathers deliberately fomented the violence. We are insisting on an investigation. It's Elizabeth's mother. Oh. Yes. Mr. Attorney General, that mob is making war on children. It is children who are being terrified. Well, it is up to Eisenhower to enforce the order of the court. Oh, they'll be glad to hear it. Yes, Ernie, Elizabeth's home. Everything's all right. All right. Thank you for calling. Yes. Okay. Elizabeth's okay? Her mom just called. All right, I'll have a cookie on that. I'll tell you something right now. I ain't staying in the South all my life. Yeah, what you gonna do? Get an education. That's the only way out. With you, everything's an education. Yes, it is. He's right, Minnie Jean. You know that yourself. All right, all right. Now, maybe Miss Bates can bring home our school assignments and we can do them here while they're figuring out what they're gonna do. Children. This is Mr. Thurgood Marshall. He's a lawyer with the NAACP. And he's going to explain to you what we're doing. How's everybody? 
Good, good. We're trying to get an injunction against Governor Fabas, forcing him to remove the Arkansas National Guard so y'all can get into school. If I were governor, I'd be worried President Eisenhower would send in troops. Well, Governor Fabas is of the opinion, incorrectly so, that it is unconstitutional for federal troops to come into a state unless the governor calls for them. Well, no wonder he's not worried. He's never gonna do that. Well, you know that, son, and I know that. But uh, you have to wonder what they know in Washington. Legal maneuvering went on for days. The National Guard stayed where it was. Mail's here. We met every day in Daisy Bates' house, doing the school assignment she was able to get, being interviewed by the press, and waiting for the mailman. Letters were coming to us from all around the world. Some of us were building up very good stamp collections. France! This one's from France. Harold Porter. Harold, P-O-R-T-E-R. Student body prayers. Now, that should have been you. That could have been you. Everybody going around saying, hail to the chief. Oh, and all those fine foxes are going around saying, where's Ernie? Where's the answers to my prayers? Someone else is answering their prayers, man. Someone else is going to be in the senior play. Someone else is fronting the Jasmine. Who? So, me. Ernie, where are you? <laughs> You're not in Central. Not in Horace, man. You're in Daisy Bates High School. That's limbo. Kitch. Ernie, I asked. There's still time to come back. I can't. Why can't you? Because I can't. Now, what kind of answer is that? Because I don't want to. It's more important now than ever. They're trying to scare us. Marcus, I pledged myself. Man, you are so deep. It's our way of becoming equal. It's like Rosa Parks not giving up her seat on that Montgomery bus to a white person. I'm tired, my feet hurt, she said. It's like Dr. King. Dr. King said, straighten up, walk erect. Brother, Mrs. Face just called. We got the injunction. The National Guard is leaving school tomorrow. being paid by a bunch of nigger lovers up north. I've been here all my life. I've never seen anything like this before in my life. I don't want them here. They don't need to be here. They need to be out of here. Two, four, six, eight. We don't want to integrate. Two, four, six, eight. We don't want to integrate. Two, four, six, eight. We don't want to integrate. Two, four, six, eight. We don't want to integrate. Two, four, six, eight. We don't want to integrate. Two, four, six, eight. We don't want to integrate. I think we should go to the side entrance. Hey, Bill, side
I'm Miss Gaines, the girls' counselor. I'd like to welcome you to Central High. Dylan? Honey, are you all right? She has a heart problem. Yeah, she has tiny holes in her heart. We'll get you home right away. No, please. I can't leave now. It's taken so long for me to get in. I won't faint again, honest. I won't. All right, come on. That day, we got our homeroom assignments. They said we wanted integration, so they separated us completely. Not one of us was put in the same homeroom. That was also the day I learned that the boys' counselor, Mr. Loomis, was my physics teacher. Mr. Loomis? Y'all sit down. Mr. Loomis, hi, I'm Ernest Green. My homeroom teacher said that. Mr. Loomis, sir? Hi, I'm Ernest Green. My homeroom teacher. Three weeks have gone by since school started. You missed all those classes. We covered the first two chapters already. Well, yes, sir, I know. I have the books. I've been trying to study. I give tests every Friday. I've given three already. You missed them all. Naturally, I'll have to give you else on each of them. Well, sir, I can do makeups. I don't give makeups, unless there's a especially good reason. And I don't see that your absence qualifies as an especially good reason. I'm sure you don't expect special treatment because you're a Negro. You do want me to be fair, don't you, boy? That's the whole idea, isn't it? To see if colored can do as well as white. Isn't it, Ernest? Well, sir, I... Physics demands a keen brain. Maybe you ought to take an easier course. No, sir, I want physics. It's a good science credit for college. Oh, you consider yourself college material. That's interesting. Well, yes, sir. I'm sure if I study hard, I can pass. Oh, really? Well, we'll find out, won't we? Go take a seat. Go on. Sit down, Ernest. Yes, sir. All right, students, take your places. Dave, shut them windows. Open your lab manuals to page 22. A ball is shot from a cannon, raised 30 degrees from the horizontal line. The initial velocity of the ball is 50 meters per second. Thank you. Ernest, gather your things. You're leaving. The police say they can't hold the barricades. They're taking you home for your own safety. Bye-bye, Negro. going to school and getting an education? It's not going to school. But it's definitely getting an education. All right, kids, get in the car. not in good taste for me, your governor, to say I told you so, and I would leave it to others to judge if the events of today justify what I did in calling out the National Guard to protect the peace. Naturally, I am concerned over reports that some Negroes have beaten white persons in Little Rock. I urge all of you to do everything possible to restore calm. 
do not, under any circumstances, attempt to take the law into your own hands. Mr. Brownell, I'm ashamed of the citizens of this city waging war on nine Negro school children. Now, somebody around here has got to do something. Guess it's me. I'm lame duck anyway. As mayor of Little Rock, I am hereby making an official request for federal troops to enforce the Supreme Court decision and keep the peace at Central High. Go on, blow out the candles. Yeah. 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 Yes. Get you a new set of Got a hot day, can't take on the Yeah, Hello. That's right. Uh -huh. We see phone calls after eight. Yes, David. <laughs> Thanks for telling us. <laughs> Daisy says, turn on the television. Yeah. Eisenhower is speaking. I have today issued an executive order directing the use of troops under federal authority to aid in the execution of federal law at Little Rock, Arkansas. This became necessary when my proclamation of yesterday was not observed and the obstruction of justice still continues. Our personal opinions about the decision have no bearing on the matter of enforcement. The responsibility and authority of the Supreme Court to interpret the Constitution are very clear. The interest of the nation in the proper fulfillment of the law's requirements cannot yield to opposition and demonstrations by some few persons. Mob rule can not be allowed to override the decisions of our courts. This has been a special address by the President of the United States, well, Dwight D. Eisenhower. How about that for a birthday special? present, brother? I know I'm not supposed to say it, but that's what I wish for. <laughs> yeah. 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 On Tuesday, September 24th, while I was still absent from the state attending the Southern Governor's Conference in Sea Island, the cleverly conceived plans of the Justice Department for the military occupation of Arkansas were placed in execution. 1,200 troops of the 101st Airborne Division occupied in force the grounds of Central High. At the same time, the entire Arkansas National Guard was federalized and are now part of the United States Army. We are now in occupied territory. Evidence, the naked force, the federal government, is here apparent in these unsheathed bayonets in the backs of schoolgirls. By the use of federal troops, rights just so precious, if not more so than integration, have been trampled into the dust under the boots of the paratroopers. Does the will of the people, the basic precept of democracy, no longer matter? Must the will of the majority now yield under force to the will of the minority, regardless of consequences? In the name of God, whom we all revere. In the name of liberty, we hold so dear. In the name of decency, which we all cherish. What is happening in America?
take my hand Precious Lord And Glad you finally got Hi. in. Howdy. Hello. If you'd like what you want, I'm Lucy. You're in a screen, aren't you? Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Hello. I'm Rhonda. Sure, I can show you. I know someone who knows you. He says you're into jazz. Oh, yeah. Me too. I spend almost all my allowance on records. I know what you mean. See you around. All right. Oh, sorry. You saw Charlie Parker? Miles Davis, too. I used to live in Chicago. That's neat. You know, I wish I could have seen Bird. <laughs> I know almost every record he ever made. April in Paris? <laughs> April in Paris. Well, I saw this really hairy white guy in the shower, so I said to him, who's the baboon, you or me? <laughs> yeah, sure you did. Well, he almost did, but he's non-confrontational. Drain, they want you in the girls' counselor's office. Don't ask me why. All right, see y'all later. Slow down, boy. Charlene says that you bump into her. Many times. He bumps into me every time he can. That's serious, boy. I hope you know how serious that is. Ernest, do you bump into Charlene? Well, you're not going to ask him, are you? I mean, what nigger ever tells the truth? Be quiet, Charlene. Well, yes, ma'am. I bumped into her once by accident, but only once. There. See, he admitted it, and it was disgusting. I burned my clothes. All right, Charlene. You can go. Well, what about him? We'll take care of it. Well, I hope so. Because my parents are going to hear about this. You're dismissed. I said, get out of here. He ought to be expelled. The thought of that boy pawing on a white girl. Oh, please. I'm recommending to Mr. Matthews the whole thing be dropped. Dropped? Nothing happened. You know Charlene Talbot. She lies like a rug. It doesn't matter what they do to you, nigger. Because you're never going to graduate from Central. Never. I want to talk with you, brother. Do you mind turning that down? Yes, sir. I heard at the church that you have been having lunch with a white girl. Not just me, Grandfather. A bunch of us are. See, some of the white kids, they're real friendly. And we just sit around and talk. Talk. Yes, sir. 
about all kinds of things. I don't have to remind you, do I? What happened in Money, Mississippi, when a boy even younger than you said, bye, baby, to a white woman. That's all the talking he did. No, Grandfather. You don't have to remind me. That's good. It's tough enough just trying to get the school integrated. Things sure can get complicated, can't they? Yes, sir. There's a hop along Cassidy this Saturday at the gym. You want to go? Maybe Terrence will come along, too. I don't too. think I can, Jefferson. See you later. Rhonda? Oh, hi, Ernie. Look what my sister sent me. The new Miles Davis album. I'll lend it to you if you want. What's the matter? I don't think we should be having lunch together anymore. Or talking. I'm sorry, Ernie. I really am. Left to maintain order will be the Arkansas National Guard, which will be stationed outside the school. Now to other news. In the recent election... Why? Why would Eisenhower agree to a thing like that? The kids felt safe as long as the paratroopers were there and nobody got messed with. Why? I'm worried about the guard being only on the outside of the school. What's going to happen on the inside? Oh. Get it. Hello? Start bleeding, boy. Things are gonna be a lot different now. Brother? Who's that on the phone? You all right? Yes. Good. Thelma, walk close to the walls. I know. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth, it is as it is in heaven.
my physics notes. They tore them all up. Now, how am I going to study for my midterms? I'm not worried about getting beaten up. They did it to Jefferson, they could do it to me. I'll get over it. But it's too late to drop the class, and I need my science credit. If I don't pass physics, all of this will be for nothing. I won't be able to graduate. All right, Ernie. I'll see if we can find you a tutor. Daisy, I think the children need to get big book bags, carry all their things with them. Yeah, tote that bars, lift that bag. Son! I can see that temperature level in you rising and rising. It's getting near a dangerous point. Watch yourself. Yes, sir, I'm sorry. Ernie, I was holding this for later, but I think I'll tell you now. All your people are looking at you. You would be the first graduate to come out of a white school here. Ernie, a four-year, all-expense-paid scholarship to Michigan State has been arranged for you by an anonymous donor. Of course, you do have to graduate. doing in there? Looking like an old hound dog with his tail between his legs. <laughs> Your daddy used to come here, too, when he was young. You know, whenever he wasn't feeling up to things, he'd find himself a hole and sit in and think. You could tell how poorly he was feeling by how deep the hole was he got into. I messed myself up, Grandfather. I didn't mean to. I mean, I thought I was doing better for myself and for everybody by transferring, but I didn't. Well, now, we don't know that for a fact yet. Do it. Now, Mr. Loomis is never going to let me pass no matter what I do. No teacher at Horace Mann would have ever given me that type of trouble. Yes, that is so. I agree with you on that. So what have I done, Grandfather? You got yourself in a deep hole, and you got to get out of it. Listen. This isn't just about passing physics and going to college. It isn't even just about integration, although that's what we want, of course, and that's what we should have, of course. But it's about more than that. It's the beginning of our exercise of our constitutional rights. You young people are making history here in Little Rock. But making history is not something that's easily done. Mrs. Bates did get me a tutor, and I started working with him. But no matter what was going on in school or on the streets, at home, things were very normal. Mother saw to that. She said integration was one thing. Getting married was integration, too. So my sister Triopia came home from Baltimore to be married, and Mother saw that the wedding went on as though nothing else was happening. I suppose you heard about Elizabeth's mother. All those years working for the School for the Blind, now she might get fired because Elizabeth's at Central. And Carlotta's father, too, can't get no more construction work. I told you so, didn't I? Did I say so? Lillian Wilson, are you still jumping on that boy? I'm not jumping. I'm not jumping. Now, you're supposed to be enjoying this happy occasion instead of talking about your facts of life. I am enjoying this happy occasion. Then throw some rice, Wilson. Throw some rice, eh? Hey. Oh. <laughs> Bye. 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 We love you. Take care of her, Harold. What's Lana with? No, nothing. Got it. What's going on? I 
told you nothing. It was about then that I started having nightmares. Physics and graduation were constantly on my mind. And so was Scott. Here's my nigga, but I'm fake. Do something. Okay, boy. <laughs> with you what are you doing what I have to no Scott Ernie I just want to make the streets safe for us you are not making the streets safe you're spreading violence they don't need me to spread it it's already spread turn your cheek now turn your other cheek what do you do when you run out of cheeks Don't tell mother about this. About what? You know you're still my little brother and I care about you. Uh, come on. No, no, I do. After Christmas vacation, some of the whites got more vicious. Get in the shower. There's glass all over the floor. There, Green. 
You're a troublemaker. But, Coach, there was glass all over the floor. I cut my foot, Coach. Brother? They keep getting away with it. Nobody takes our word for nothing. The rule is, if a teacher or an adult doesn't see it, then nothing's done. Mrs. Bates says some white kids have been expelled already. Yeah, but not enough. Brother, do you want to leave Central? You can go back to Horace Mann. Or to Baltimore with Triopia and finish high school there. No one would think poorly of you. I would. I'd be quitting. Well, it's not going to get any easier. The closer you get to graduation, the worse it'll be. I know. Well, you talk it over with Jackie Robinson. They cussed him. They spiked him. They threw baseballs at his head. That's what it took for the first Negro to break in. I guess it's going to take that much to break you into Central. I'll wash up for supper. We're having pork roast. No okra. Mother. Some of the other kids' parents been having trouble at work. Are they going to fire you? I don't know. What will be, will be. But you are not to let that affect what you do. What you weigh, nigger? What's up? When you fall in the sewer, we want to know how much to uh, dip out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Green. You don't look green to me. You look stinking, ugly. Take a look. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, something, something, while I nodded nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping. See, there's this raven just above his chamber door. What lips my lips have kissed, and where and why, I have forgotten. And what arms have lain under my head till morning. Minnie Jean, that's terrible. What else does a poem say? Oh, lots. I hope this chili's good. Hey, Jackie, drop. She threw chili on me! He's been messing with me. Every chance he gets, he says something nasty to me. I don't want to hear anymore. I will not put up with that kind of behavior in my school. Now, Minnie Jean, any further incident and you will be expelled. Is that clear? Minnie Jean, is that clear?
Well, I hope they throw you out, nigger. Leave me alone, white trash. What? I said, leave me alone, you white trash. You don't even belong here. I can't believe. Did you just hear that? Did you just hear what she just called me? Benny Jean, back in my office. Look, I'm glad to be getting out of here. I'll be in New York. Lena Horne's daughters went to the new Lincoln School, and Harry Belafonte's. They gave me a scholarship. They want me. I think you're all crazy for staying here and taking this agitation. Minnie Jean. I gotta go. Goodbye, Thelma. Bye, Elizabeth. Take care. Hi. Ernest, you get out of here. Go where folks are decent. Goodbye, Minnie Jean. Bye, Minnie Jean. Please just let me go, Bob. I'm gonna be late for class. Sure. We're nice guys. Yes, sir. He pushed Elizabeth down the stairs. I guess I got mad. Did any teacher see it? I don't know. No. Ernest, maybe he bumped into Elizabeth by accident. That can happen, can it? Students, Bump into each other all the time by accident. Don't they? Don't they, Ernest? Yes, sir. All right, I'm gonna let this pass this time. But if it happens again, Ernest, believe me, you'll be expelled. That's all. Hi. Hi. I talked to Miss Gaines. It's okay, Ernie. I'm staying. Good. Tremendous, isn't it? Knocks me out. <laughs> yeah, I'll be right there. It's called Beast. Guaranteed to stimulate the libidinal impulses of the chicks. <laughs> come on, brother. Come with us. No, no, no. I'm not much in the mood for the bending impulses. It's Valentine's Day. 
Now what you gonna do? Sit here and study? <laughs> I mean, you can't study with a moor in the air. Come on, it'll feel good. <sighs> All right. Why don't you go to Central High Dance? They'll give you a uniform and let you serve up the refreshments. You were right, Marcus. You told me not to transfer. I should have listened to you. No, Ernie, I, I wasn't right. Everyone at Horace Mann is proud of you. They're rooting for you. They want to see you graduate. It's hard to say this, but I talked against you going to Central. So I was afraid to do it myself. Well, brother, how was the dance? Real cool. Grandfather, could I be having so much trouble with physics because I'm a Negro? <laughs> That's exactly what Loomis and everybody like him would like you to believe. Yeah, I know, but still, is it possible? Brother. You just stick with your tutor every step of the way from here to the final exam. And then you'll find the answer for yourself. Good night, Grandfather. Good night. All right, class, listen up. Keep your examination papers face down on your desk until I tell you to start. If you finish before class is over, bring the test paper to my desk and leave. OK, start.
All right. Finished or not, turn them in. while before I'd know if I passed physics. As preparations for graduation went ahead, I fought to keep up my hopes. you as a friend no matter what you deserve the very best in life i know it's been a hard year for you and many of us didn't help honestly i don't think i would have had the guts to do what you did if you ask me some people in arkansas are for the birds i believed them at first but i've changed seeing what you did is why may god bless you richly I did it. I did it, Grandfather. I passed physics. <laughs> well, so now I guess you know the answer to your question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hail to the Hey, big hey, hey, hey. <laughs> that's not Michigan State, that's Michigan. Oh, I know, but I don't know the state fight song. Yeah. <laughs> Hail to the big All right. Hail <laughs> All right, quiet down, everybody. I have an announcement to make. I spoke with Daisy Bates earlier today. She's talked to Dr. King, and he will come to Ernie's graduation. Oh, oh wonderful. Is it? <laughs> oh, but uh, your napkin belongs on your lap, Scott. Hello? You will never make it through the ceremony, nigger. You're going to be shot. The Lord has Congratulations. Thank you. Dr. King, this is Mr. Scott, Ernie's grandfather. And this is Mrs. Green, Ernie's mother. Hello. Matthews wants to see you in Tunnel H. Yes, sir. Ernest, if you don't want to march out there with the class, you can go home. 
We'll mail you your diploma. It'd be all right. It'd be safer, but you'd still graduate. I'm sorry, sir. My grandfather wants to take pictures of me, and I can't disappoint him. The graduating class of 1958 will always stand out in my memory because it reacted so admirably to the shock of having the eyes of the world focused on the school. Only the news of the Russian Sputnik took our school off the front page. The occurrences which members of the class of 1958 will remember, however, as the most significant events of the senior year will probably not be recorded in books. These, I believe, have been the really important events to most members of the class. The string of 33 victories won by the varsity football team with two seniors named on All-American High School selections, four on the All-Southern team, and nine members making first string on All-Conference team. The listing of Central High as one of the top 38 high schools in the United States. The outstanding performances in the key club capers Beta Club College Day, the beautiful concerts of the a cappella choir, the successes of the varsity basketball and track team, the, the dances of the service club. Roberta Gates. William Gidley. Clark Grayson. Ernest Grain. Will the class please rise? I now present to you the class of 1958. In July 1958, Governor Faubus won nomination for a third term as governor soon closed the schools of Little Rock to forestall integration. In a Gallup poll taken in late 1958, Governor Faubus was voted one of the 10 most admired persons in the United States. Ernie Green earned his master's degree at Michigan State University and later served as Assistant Secretary of Labor in the Carter administration. Today, he is a managing director of an investment banking firm in Washington, D.C and a member of the National Board of the NAACP.